Cool projects are rare. Here I found one I want to show to you. An undercover personal communicator. It includes a lot of new technologies. ESP32, smartphones, LoRa, BLE, GPS, Mesh and, as you see, 3D printing. And it solves a problem which could be seen as a human right. Personal SMS style communication everywhere in the world. Without the need of any infrastructure and without mass surveillance. Everything open source, of course. How cool is that? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. LoRa technology already offers a big range, which can be extended by using meshes. When I was searching for such a mesh network, I found two projects, Disaster Radio and Meshtastic. Both projects are founded in the Bay Area around Silicon Valley and both want to create independent communication meshes that do not depend on infrastructure. Disaster Radio is more focused on the rare event of a disaster. Meshtastic can be used whenever smartphones have no connection or are dangerous to use. So it is much more attractive. In this video, I will introduce the Meshtastic project offer a glimpse into mesh technology, upload the project to T-Beam ESP32 boards and build a small demo network. But what is Meshtastic? It is the merger of the two words mesh and fantastic and it connects a bunch of TTGO T-Beam boards via an underground network. Each group member has to have such a Meshtastic device. I use these T-beams with LoRa and GPS and added an OLED. But other devices are also supported. These boxes offer SMS style communication. You type a message on your smartphone and it appears on all OLED displays as well as smartphones of your group. Because the T-beams have GPS, your location is shared with the group. So you can organize yourself. The position is also shared without GPS because then Meshtastic takes the position from the smartphone. Isn't this fantastic? How does it work? The Unread smartphone runs a Meshtastic app and the communication between the smartphone and the ESP device is done via BLE. The communication between the Meshtastic devices is done by a LoRa mesh network. All devices are part of this network and can relay messages to others. Therefore, the reach of the network can be significant. It does not use any 2, 3, 4 or 5G towers. Therefore, it works everywhere in the world. And it is hard to trace because the network providers do not see your communication and position. Of course, only if you switch your mobile comms off. Kevin Hester, the creator of this project, is a mastermind. He masters all these technologies and brought them together in a working and easy to use project. And now he has the help of others to move the project forward. So let's dig into the details. We all know LoRaWAN, the network with lots of nodes and gateways. Here there is no communication from node to node. All communication has to go via gateways and the central infrastructure. Public 405G networks are also organized this way. This is why it is also easy to track all of us. Meshes are very different, much more guerrilla. All participating nodes are the same and are connected. Of course, not all nodes can connect to all others because of reach limitations. Because this fact, meshes can become quite big. You could say, why do I need LoRa? I can create a BLE mesh with my smartphone. This is true, but its range would be minimal. Maybe your voice has a bigger reach. Because such a LoRa mesh can have such a long range, Kevin built another feature into his software. You can create groups that are separated from each other. Nodes from one group share the same channel. Such a channel has a name and from this name Meshtastic calculates a unique combination of a transmission frequency and a password. 
In channel options, you should be able to select if you want high volume but short range or low volume but longer range. The first is for large groups with lots of interconnections. The latter for smaller groups with fewer interconnections. Because of the password, more than one group can share one frequency in the same location. Let's have a closer look at meshes, particularly at radio meshes. They are much harder than wired meshes because in addition to be ad hoc and dynamically changing their topology, the medium is unreliable. Radio connections sometimes work and if you move a few meters, stop to work. Quite a few PhDs were awarded to finding the best mesh strategy. I decided to use a particular one to understand how such strategies work. The name of this particular strategy is Batman. I thought that this must be a good, if not the best strategy available, with such a name. But how does it work? If a node joins a network, it does not know a lot. In our case, only the frequency, the spreading factor and the password. This is why it sends a hello message, also called OGM or originator message, to find the best nodes around its location. All nodes receiving the message retransmit the OGM received from the best neighbor. They transmit it only once to avoid network congestions by OGMs. They also keep this best node information as the right node to use for a message towards the originator of the OGM. Like that, each node only has to store one best node for each other network node. There is no database about the overall network structure. As seen before, the topology can change and therefore OGMs have to be sent out from time to time to maintain the best routes. Fortunately, this algorithm is already implemented and we do not have to care if we do not want. The next problem Kevin had to solve was to save energy. The T-Beam has an 8650 battery on board. We all know that the ESP32 has to sleep most of its time if we want to get long battery life. Fortunately, the LoRa receiver can stay on, listen to incoming messages and wake the ESP if it got a message. By the way, for people interested in learning how to program, this project is an excellent example. It uses Platform IO and Kevin has a professional programming style. It is for sure worthwhile to look into the code. Also, if you are interested in how to use LoRa modules and BLE, you can learn a lot. Now I would like to show you how it works. We find a ready-made bin file on the project page. Select the one for your region and also download ESP Home Flasher. Select the COM port and the bin file. Hit Flash ESP and ready is the device. Of course, you can also download and print this cool 3D case from Thingiverse. Each Meshtastic node has to be paired with a smartphone. This is best done if it has a small OLED. If, as I did, you buy T-beams without OLED, it is easy to mount one yourself. If you choose the one with VCC and ground in this place, it's a no-brainer. Otherwise, you have to improvise. During pairing, the display shows a number and if you key this number into the app, they are paired. I used the default group and everything was ready to go. One smartphone belongs to me, the other to Joe. I can see the position of us on a map. And if I send him a message, I see it on both screens and he sees it also on his smartphone. And of course, he can answer me. I only have two T-beams, so I cannot show you how all others would get the same message. Very important, if you use the right LoRa frequency for your country, everything is legal because it uses the same ISM frequencies and the same modulation as TTN, for example. Now the interesting question, what is the range? No, it will most probably not work across the 200 kilometers from video number 120, but it will work on a line of sight for a few kilometers. And if you have a mesh of several nodes, the range will be extended. If one or two nodes are elevated and can be reached by many other nodes, your network can become quite big. Without any infrastructure needed. 
And as said before, it is hard to track because first, this is a new way and most organizations interested in spying on you probably do not watch this channel. And second, the transmission is password protected. So somebody has to put some effort into it if he wants to read your messages. Now a few words to the performance. The transmission speed of LoRa is quite low, so do not expect wonders. And because the device sleeps between transmissions, you have to wait for the next time slot for communication. This time can be adjusted and Kevin has already put a feature request to change the sleep time from the smartphone. Like that, if you plan short events of only a few hours, you can decrease sleep time to get more speed and also less latency. Of course, you have to charge the device earlier or change the battery. But even with the device always on, it should run for 24 hours on one battery. And a word about quality. The project is complex and many things can go wrong. I had issues during my test and would not recommend its usage in a productive environment. But maybe you sign up as an independent test person for the project. This would be extremely valuable for the project team, because having independent testers always increase the quality of products. And a word about future plans. A few people are interested in building specialized hardware for this project. Interestingly, they will not use the ESP32. They will use the NRF52XX chips from Nordic Semiconductors. These chips are perfect for low power BLE projects. For me, this is particularly interesting as you might know that I want to use these chips for my future projects. This is all for today. I wish this project good luck on its way. Summarized. Meshtastic provides a underground communication possibility for groups. It is based on a LoRa mesh network. It uses Android smartphones for message entry. You can see the messages either on the smartphone or on a small OLED on the device. The positions of the group members are also displayed on a map on the smartphone. Radio meshes need specific strategies to adopt to ever-changing topologies. We looked at how the Batman protocol works. It is effortless to build a meshtastic device because you only have to flash a T-beam with a ready-made bin file. The project still is in development, so expect you have to do some testing and not everything works flawlessly. Kevin started a port to the NRF52 processors. Very promising. Even the famous YouTuber Sexy Cyborg seems to be interested in the project. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.